In this video, we will look at building uh, counter controlled loops using the for loop syntax. So, the for loop syntax is just an alternate syntax for building counter controlled loops, alternate of the while syntax. So, the syntax for a for loop is as follows we're going to have the keyword for followed by a pair of parentheses. And inside the for loop parentheses, we are going to have three statements. We are going to have an initialize statement, which initializes the conditional variable, a conditional expression to test whether to stay in the loop or not, and an update statement that describes how we update the conditional variable. Then inside the for loop uh, attached code block, we're going to have all of the statements that execute the work of the loop. And the way we flow through a for loop is when we encounter a for loop, first we do the initialize statement, second, we test the condition. If the condition is true, we execute the, the loop body, all of the statements in the loop body. That's three. And then number four, we jump out of the loop body and come back and do the update statement. Once we do the update statement, we come back and check to see if the conditional expression is still true. And we keep doing this, this loop where we check the conditional expression. If it's true, we do the work. Then we do the update statement, check again until the conditional expression is false. Once the conditional expression is false, we exit the loop and move on with our code. Let's compare the for loop syntax versus the while loop syntax when creating a counter controlled loop. So in our while loop syntax, what we do is first we initialize a conditional variable, some counter that counts starting at a start value. We count up to an end value, do our work inside our, the body of the loop. And then inside the body of the loop, the last thing we do is update our counter by some increment value. And we keep updating the counter until the counter reaches the end value, at which point we break the loop. For using the for loop syntax, we do exactly the same things. It's just different syntax. So we also, in our for loop, we initialize a counter to some start value. We keep counting while that counter is not, has not reached the end value. And each time when we are done doing the work, we are going to update our counter by some increment value. And inside the body, we do the work. So if you compare the for loop and the while loop syntax, they both do exactly the same thing. Well, there's one main difference between the while loop and the for loop. And this, this can come into, this can be an important difference. In our while loop, the counter, the update statement takes place in the loop body. Whereas in a for loop, the update takes place after we execute the, work, the code block for the loop. So if we were to somehow break out of a while loop early, which we will talk about in a, different, in a future video, if we were to break out of a while loop early, there's a chance we would miss updating our conditional variable. Whereas if I were to break out of a for loop early, I would still go around and get a guaranteed update. So that's the main difference. Let's do a couple quick examples using the for loop syntax. So what we will do is redo the same two examples we did in the previous video on counter controlled loops using the while loop syntax, and instead we'll implement them using the for loop syntax. So example one, print hello world to the console 10 times. <clears throat> using the for loop syntax, I'm going to put the keyword for, and the first thing I'm going to do is define my initialization syntax. I need to initialize some counter to some start value. So I'm going to say int counter is equal to, perhaps we'll count from 1 to 10. So I'm going to initialize a counter variable starting at 1, and then I follow it by a semicolon. So it's a full initialized statement. Then we are going to follow with a conditional expression. I'm going to say we want to keep looping while the counter is less than or equal to 10. Here's our up, our conditional statement, followed by a semicolon. The third thing we're going to do is write our update statement. Well, each time through the loop, I want to update my counter to be equal to the previous counter plus one. Then we will attach our loop body. So inside the parentheses of our for loop syntax, I have my step one, my initialization, step two, my conditional expression, and step three, or sorry, step four, my update. 
So if we are, we are thinking of following the four steps to building a good loop, <coughs> this is this gives us three of the four steps. All that is left is the work. So inside the for loop body, we will do our work. Console.writeline will print hello world. So let's run it and test it. And we have printed hello world 10 times, just like we did in the while loop. So the for loop is is a, it is different, is a optional syntax for building counter controlled loops. Let's look at our second example. Print the, a countdown from 10 to 1, then print the word surprise. Well, we will do this using a counter controlled or, or a for loop to build a counter controlled loop. So I'm going to say for int, well, because I declared this counter variable inside my for loop uh, parentheses, the scope of this counter variable is only inside the for loop. So it does not exist outside the for loop. So what I'm going to do again is redeclare a new counter. It's almost like you're creating a temporary counter just for the loop. This time I'm going to initialize my counter at 10. I want to keep counting while my counter is greater than or equal to 1. Since we're counting down, I'm going from high to low. And my update statement is going to take my counter and set it equal to the previous counter, minus 1, because we're walking in reverse. As far as the syntax goes, keep an eye out for accidentally putting a semicolon at the end of the third statement. Um, while loop does not like that, or the for loop syntax does not want a semicolon at the end of the update statement. Only a semicolon to separate the initialization statement and the conditional statement from the update. Okay, so we've identified one, our initialization, two, our condition that we want to loop under, three, an update statement. Now all we need to do is is the work. So I'm going to say console.write. We'll print out the counter number just like we did in the while loop. And there we go. Now when I'm outside the, the loop, I'm going to print surprise. Console.write line. Surprise. Let's test this out. And there we go. Counted down from 10 to 1 and then printed surprise. So here are a couple uh, alternate ways to build counter controlled loops. Now I should end the video saying this. The while loop syntax is a universal syntax. With a while loop, you can create sentinel controlled loops and counter controlled loops very easily. The for loop syntax is optional, an optional way to create counter controlled loops. Or I should say it is focused, it is meant for counter controlled loops. It is much more difficult to create a sentinel controlled loop using the for loop syntax. Sometimes it can be done, but not always. All right, hope that helps.